Hi folks, Dave here, and today I'm going to do an overview of the MFJ Enterprises travel radio. This is a 20 meter single sideband FMJ 9420. And this is the package that it comes in. I'll just show you that real quick. Okay. And I had originally suspected that there would be a box inside this box, but alas, no. This is the way it comes. Radio's in a bag inside some foam, and that's perfectly fine. And if we look inside, we'll see what you get with it. Which is a power cable, a manual, and another catalog. All right, well, I want to show you something here real quick. I'm going to pop, unbox this here. I'll be right back. Okay, so here's the radio unboxed out of the plastic. And uh, you can see the top of it here has the uh, speaker. Here's the uh, front of the radio. Power on off, mic, tune on off. Not really sure what that does yet. We'll have to read the manual. You have a transmit light. Here's your VFO. Fine tuning for your VFO. And a volume control. And this is what the power cord that comes with it looks like. Now, these radios have um, two things that they are notorious for. They are notorious for being very fun, for being operating very well, functioning very well, but they're also notorious for quality. Uh, in other words, not having very good quality. And I want to address that in the two things that, that I found right out of the box with this radio. Now I'm going to zoom this guy in here a little bit. Maybe you can see this. The front panel is stamped out of a piece of steel. And you can see the little uh, tick marks, I guess you could say, from where that was uh, left in the form. And here's one right here, and this guy's actually pretty sharp. You could uh, you could cut yourself up pretty good on that one. Now that's not a huge deal. I can take a file and just knock that off. But I want you to be aware that when you take this out of the box, it's not going to be perfect. Um, you can even see here. Here's a little here's a little ding dent mark uh, from where it was stamped out. That does not take away from its ability to work as a transceiver. Now, the one thing that did concern me, and I have read other articles about their, the quality, is when I first got this radio and I took it out of the box, it rattled. There was a little rattle in it. And after rattling, rattling around just a little bit, a nice little nut fell out. Now, I don't know where this goes. I'm going to open it up here in just a little bit and see if I can determine where this, this nut goes. But that's just, uh, I just want you to be aware that you may have some issues with these guys right out of the box. Once you resolve those, I, I think you'll be happy with them. Everybody else seems to be. Okay, let's look at the side. Okay, you got two screws here that'll pull the top off. These mounting screws here are allow you to attach um, other MFJ devices to it, uh, such as uh, their power supply. They have a power supply for this. They also have an antenna tuner for that. We'll go over all of these as we build this radio up to a functional state. The other side of the radio, same thing. Bottom. Okay, I'm going to zoom this back out here a little bit. Okay, here's the bottom. Uh, looks like you have some a slot here, maybe for some heat ventilation. I can see some trans transmitter trans uh, is transistors up in there, probably power transistors. Little rubber feet, okay. 
And now we go to the back of the radio. Zoom this back in here. All right, so here's what we have on the back. Almost all of them have power in and an antenna. They all have the punch outs for the CW and the key input. Some of the models, the older models, do not have the mic gain accessible. Some of the older models do not have the microphone jack, or excuse me, the headphone jack. Okay, so if you buy one today, this is September 2012, you will get one with all of the bells and whistles that comes on it. The headphone jack and the, very, and the fine tuning. Okay, some of the older models don't have that. I just want you to make you aware of that. <clears throat> now, I will go over in a later video the installation of the uh, CW module that is used for uh, uh, Morse code. Okay, so there's a quick overview so that you can see the front and the back of the current radio and uh, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna pop this guy open. I'm gonna zoom this out a little bit here. And I'm gonna pop this guy open to see if I can uh, figure out where this nut came from. And I will be right back in just a moment. Okay, so I went and got a, uh, a screwdriver here, and let's see if we can uh, pop this guy open and figure out where this nut came from. Okay, so here we go. Here's the top of the case. It just has the speaker on it. Here's the inside. Here's that power, those power transistors I was mentioning that it looked like I saw from the inside. Alright, so let's see if I can find a missing nut. We have a couple of standoffs here. This will be for the CW module. These connectors here are also for the CW module. I'll show that a little bit later. It looks like there's a nut there, there's a nut there, there, there. Now this is this is an experiment, you know. I'm I'm not not sure what I've got here. All right, all right. I believe I have found it. It may be a little hard to see on the camera. Let me zoom this in just a little bit. And I'll have to move this around. Alright, I'm up here in the very front. Here's the S, this is the S meter. And there is a standoff without a nut on it. And I can tell you probably can't tell it in the uh, picture, uh, but I can tell looking right down in here that there are some marks that the the little I get this on here. This is a lock locking nut washer. I can see the marks that these little teeth have made in the metal. So as I'm looking around, I don't see anything else that appears to be missing a nut. I was a little concerned about this power transistor because it uses the same size. So I was concerned about that, but it's in good shape. Also the PL239 uh, was in good shape there. Alright, so I will 
somehow figure out how to get a Here's what that is, this screw right here coming through. I'll figure out how to get a nut driver on the back of that and reinstall that guy right there. And uh, then we'll be in good shape to, uh, to move on to the next step in this uh, radio project. But there's an overview of the radio. I've shown you the front panel, the rear panel. You've got a look on the inside. Uh, we talked about some of the potential quality issues. Um, like I say, electronically, uh, most people concur that it works very well electronically, and it'll be a fun radio, and I'm looking forward to making some contacts with it. So that's it for now. Uh, I am Dave, AF5DN, and uh, thanks for watching.